Hey guys, this is Matt Reisinger and Jordan Smith with The Build Show. Reporting here at The Bow Show on behalf of the Journal of Light Construction. We're going to see at this German show what we can find that's interesting for the American builder or American carpenter. Let's get going. We're here at the Metabo booth and what they've done here that is different than any other manufacturers, they're actually using their batteries across multiple different tool manufacturers. So you've got Metabo, you've got uh, Rothenberger, you've got Mafel, you've got Colomix, you've got a whole bunch of other tools that I've never heard of, but they all use Metabo base for the battery, which makes it very convenient to have a broad range of specialty tools that all use the same battery. Let's check a couple of these out. First is the Metabo cordless metal saw. Now this is rated up to 10 millimeters, but he said that's only for a short run, seven millimeters all, all day long. So that's basically a quarter inch stain, uh, quarter inch steel that this can cut for three meters is what he said. I'll have to try it out, I'm skeptical. A couple of the cool things though is it is a track saw so you can get very clean straight cuts. They're making their own blades. Looks like a very robust blade. I'm just skeptical that this small motor and battery package can really give you the oomph that you need to get through a lot of quarter inch steel. Hopefully I'll be able to review it in the future, but I love the form factor and for small fabrications, I think it would be a very good addition. Let's walk back here. So here's where having the same battery across multiple tools comes in handy. This is a specialty tool, a little track saw, just sort of like the, the uh, Festool FSK You've got the track that rides along the bottom of the saw. I like this saw a lot. It's small. One of my problems with the FSK is it's so big, it's okay for you know some framing stuff, but I always imagined it as being the little saw that maybe a cabinet installer would have to do specialty cuts. This one does it, and it runs the same Metabo battery. So for the cordless job site, Metabo has a great system. The battery, the uh, vacuums are battery powered. The table saw is battery powered and it still has the capability of using the battery pack with the cord coming off of it. If you ever wanted to go back to AC, you can do that as well. One other thing I want to show you here. So this is Metabo's tapping drill. What's cool about it is when I pull the trigger, it's going to spin left until it fills a resistance and then it spins back to the right to tap. So. This allows me not to booger up my threads when I'm trying to hit uh, a hole to tap. Let me show you this in action. Get a little, get a little schmoo on it there. Spinning left, I go in, it starts spinning right. I release pressure, it comes back out. I put pressure back in, and I'm able to cycle through my tapping operation very cleanly. Really cool. Goes up to 14 millimeters, I believe. It also has a neat interlocking feature. The back side of this bit is square and the back side of my chuck is square too, meaning that I've got a very positive lock on this as I tighten it up. This is my favorite thing in the booth so far. Hey guys, coming to the Festool booth and they have some cool stuff here that I have not seen in the States. First, let's talk insulation cutters. You know, some of these sheet goods like this, or not sheet goods, flexible insulations I should say, are difficult to cut. People are using bread knives. Look at this cordless tool that has a knife blade on it. And the same tool, but this one has actually a tooth blade. So if you're cutting rock wool, if you're cutting what they use a lot, which is this wood fiber insulation, really even a fiberglass bat, you're gonna use this one. It's got that wavy knife edge, almost like a bread knife that you're cutting your bread. And then this one over here with the teeth is gonna cut your polyisos, all those thicker, um, materials. Man, that is really fun to see. The other thing I wanted to show you over here was what we see a lot in Germany and in Switzerland so far is what they call timber construction. They don't mean two by, they mean four by. This is an example of what you would see commonly as rafters. This is a four by six or a four by eight material. And check out this giant saw. They've got a saw that will cut it all the way across in one pass. And you can flip that out for a blade that looks like a planer blade or a shaper blade, and look how it'll auger out this giant bird's mouth. You can gang cut all your rafters at one time. These are obviously plug-in tools. We've got some serious power coming to these tools. 
man, it was really fun to see what they had in Festool in Germany. A lot of the other booths you can get back home, but these were some tools that I have not seen before. So we're at the Bosch booth. Two things I want to show you that are world premieres. This is the SDS Max 8S hammer drill bit. The end, instead of having carbide pieces brazed onto the end, the complete tip is a carbide piece that is welded onto the shaft. They say welded, not brazed. I don't exactly know what the technology is. It looks like maybe a nickel alloy matrix. So there's that, but it's welded. And then this is for rebar, so this is where it gets cool. It's a hammer drill, so as it's hammering down through your concrete, it's using vibration and impact to break up the concrete, and then these flutes pull it up out of there. Now, when you hit rebar, it actually has a cutting tip on the end. So that carbide is manufactured just like what a machine tool carbide would be, and you're able to cut through metal with it. So it cuts through the concrete, and then when it hits the rebar, it acts like a machine tool tip and cuts through the rebar. That's one. Number two is the X-Lock. So everybody's familiar with the way traditional grinders work. You've got the thread-on connector keeping your grinding disc on. Bosch has came up with the X-Lock, removes just like this, and then it gets put on just as easily. You snap it on and you're on. And it's locked because it's got a square drive. So it is locked on there. You don't have to worry about it falling off. I really like this system. Now, obviously, for Bosch, it makes sense because you know what's expensive? Consumables. I can buy this grinder for, I don't know, say $100, say $200, say $500 that I spend on a grinder. Doesn't matter. I spend all my money on a brace of consumables, grinding discs, sanding pads, etc. If Bosch can lock you into their detail, then you're stuck buying their adhesives forever. Usually, I think that's a bad idea and I don't like it. In this case, this is a really cool system. I would, I would go all in. I would, I would switch over for this system because everybody has seen their employees banging the grinders on the table trying to get it off because that little tool that comes with this grinder, you lost that six months ago. You have no idea where it is. So you're tightening it by hand and then you're banging it off when you want to take it off. This takes care of that. And what you give up is you have to buy through Bosch on the adhesive or on the uh, consumables. I think it's worth it. Okay, y'all, coming to you from the Max booth. This is actually a Japanese company here at the German Show, and they make something that I don't see in the U.S. In fact, I'm not sure if it's even around anymore, but I heard a lot of talk about it. It's called high-pressure guns. What we're talking about is a nail gun that uses basically more than twice the pressure of a standard nail gun. I remember this in the JLC maybe 20 years ago, and I don't know if it's available currently in the States, but the deal is with a lot higher pressure. In fact, this one's shooting... 335 PSI pressure. That means that you can have a smaller, lighter weight gun. This is a full size framing gun right here. And you can shoot all kinds of stuff. In fact, he even showed us how we could shoot a nail instead of using a power actuated fastener, a pneumatic fastener. And they've got it in some other crazy sizes in two, including some nails that are literally like five or six inch nails. You've got a ton of power and a ton of air. A couple of their cool things that they've got is this one will shoot, or this compressor rather, will make both regular and high pressure. So you could use your old guns as well as your new guns. Jordan's over there making it loud. And you've got one of these that will reduce the pressure at the end of the line. So one of the problems with low pressure systems is when you get to the end of the line, you're nailing on a bump fire, you lose pressure, and you end up having nails stick up. This would allow you to use a high pressure line all the way to the end. Check out this hose too, man. The Japanese, I love Japanese manufacturing. Super flexible. I'll show you how it can actually go into a knot and yet you still have full pressure coming out of here. This is some really nice stuff. Plus the compressor is quite quiet, 68 decibels. And this smaller unit, super light. Man, I really like this. I think you might be able to talk your United States Max dealer into getting this for you. And I would think this should take off, especially as our framers get older and we want those lighter guns. We can't power around those huge guns if you're like me and you're in your 40s. Man, this is really, really cool. You know, I've been cold all week. This is the first time I've actually been warm. Mascot workwear. What do you think, Jordan? 
it really is cool. They've got pockets for everything. You got cell phone pockets in here, earbud liners. You got these little hand things that keep the sleeves over your gloves. I, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of workwear, like well thought out workwear. You know, here's here's a detail too. Like on at where it buckles at your waist, the button doesn't show through, right? So if you're a tradesman, you're working in a house, you're not going to scratch that. Almost as if you're car detailing. I'll tell you guys, the Bow Show 2019, really impressive. We saw some cool stuff that isn't necessarily available in the States, although I think you might be able to find one or two pieces from these guys. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.